Hi everyone, I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. Thank you for joining me. Yesterday there was a magnitude 2.4 earthquake in the New Madrid fault zone. Two people reported feeling this earthquake. Generally, they say only sensitive people will feel an earthquake that's less than 3.5 magnitude. Um, but there's been a lot of people who've been reporting feeling these minor, very small earthquakes of late. So using Google Earth, here's the location of that 2.4 earthquake. And, you know, I do a lot of research into fault zones and causes for earthquakes. Over here, we have the uh, New Madrid earthquake that happened um, in 1811, um, 1812. You got a typo there. More than likely, it was uh, a magnitude 8.5 earthquake. But there's been other significant earthquakes in the last few decades, and I'll pull this out and I'll show it to you up north over here. Uh, there was a uh, 5.5 5 in 1968. In 2008, there was a 5.2. And in 1987, a 5.2. And this is not far where they figure back about 6,000 years ago. There was a magnitude 7.5. And for some unknown reason, uh, many of these newer faults which is new in geologic time, have been reactivated. There is a paper on isgsillinois.ed, which states earthquakes occur in Illinois about once every year, but damaging quakes are far much less frequent. Minor damage from Illinois earthquakes is reported about once every 20 years. So keep that in mind. Most recently, a magnitude 5.0 earthquake shook southeastern Illinois in June of 1987, causing minor damage to Lawrenceville and Ole areas. Serious damage from earthquakes occur every 70 to 90 years. So in their paper, they say that serious damage from earthquakes occur every 70 to 90 years. It's been about 125 years since they had the uh, what they call the Halloween, October 31st, 1895 earthquake. So looking at the map, most of the most recent damaging earthquakes have been in the northeast of the New Madrid Fault Zone, or the Rift Zone. In this area, they have half garbins, um, not a full garbin, but a half garbin, where along the Fault Zone, because of the rifting, the spreading that's going on through here, one side of the fault drops down where the other side rises up. An interesting thing about this rift zone as it travels up between Illinois and Kentucky, it makes a bend. And in this bend, uh, the one side of the garbin moves, is, moves southeast, southeast down and to the right, where on the Kentucky side of the border, the half garbins are moving north. And then I found even more interesting information. Yeah, Hicks Dome. That's an actual volcanic crater from an ancient volcano. Research done on this ancient volcano, uh, done by Bradbury and Baxter in 1992, concluded that the volcano was a mantle-derived volcanism. The magma evidently came up from the mantle through the crust of the earth and then the body of about 3.35 kilometers or only 11,000 uh, feet in depth. And what happened was the magma came up in the area called Haber's Ridge, flowed under the ground where it came up and exploded here at Hicks Dome. There's other fault zones with rhyolite flows not far from this area. See this red line here? That's the best I could draw it out. But this fault line here is called the Cottage Grove Fault. And there's areas of ancient dike intrusion of rhyolite. 
more about um, Cabers Ridge. The explosion there, which was probably rhyolite, um, from Hicks Dome, was fed by Crab Cabers Ridge intrusion. Hicks Dome is situated on the southwest flank of a large northwest trending positive magnetic anomaly, the maximum intensity of which occurs near Carbers Ridge, uh, 9 kilometers northeast of the center of the dome. They interpreted the source of this anomaly to be uh, malphic, intrusive body at depths of 3.35 kilometers or 11,000 feet and greater, which would place the top of the intrusion in the lower Paleozoic stra strata, Precambrian basement. Now this would associate with uh, when the earth went through its boom in uh, different marine life. Uh, this whole area has sediment from the ocean and it was um, uplifted when the continents collided and they suspect it has to do with that fault zone, the uh, collision of this ancient, <laughs> yeah, fault zone that is all the way down, stretches all the way down from Texas. Can you see the little red line? Um, up through Oklahoma and then up to uh, the New Madrid Rift Zone. There's another area here in Oklahoma uh, where it's a large area of rhyolite outcrops. Now we know that the Mer North American plate is slowly moving northeast. And if you look at the direction of the uh, larger eruptions that have happened. Yeah, that's kind of a northeast direction. Also northeast from uh, the rift zone there along the Cambrian Rift. Let me zoom in so you can see it. It goes up and around and along the bottom. Um, probably extends all the way up to the New Madrid Fault Zone. Evidently, too, during that Earthquake in 1811-1812, the Ohio River was frozen over. We, you know, we do have reports how the Mississippi actually flowed backwards. But because the Ohio River and that's its junction right there was frozen, there was no reports about um, that happening or any effects of that earthquake on the Ohio River, which I thought was a bit odd. So if history repeats itself, more than likely, if there is another large earthquake on the uh, New Madrid Rift, and I have that drawn out in red. We got it going up through here by Cottage Grove, comes down and around, and it goes up into the uh, Wabash Valley seismic zone. Uh, this probably will be the area somewhere up in here for the next large earthquake whenever it decides to come, which it's evidently overdue. This paper by the Ideals. Uh, uh, Lewis Education talks about the magma that's under the ground there. Yeah, which really surprised me because, you know, the geologists and USGS doesn't talk about that. But anyways, it's about the Cottage Grove Fault, uh, which is iron and magnesium rich intrusive rocks. And the dike intrusions show that the molten basic rock from the upper mantle or the lower crust has been forced upward under great heat and pressure through zones of weakness such as faults and fissures and these are uh, recently been activated then it goes on to buck to talk about possible triggering mechanisms for earthquakes several may apply to earthquakes in southern illinois this might surprise you Sudden changes in barometric pressure, changes in surf water loads. Yeah, well, we, we know about that. Earth tides, yeah, the, the moon. Crustal rebound from uploading of glacial ice. Crustal sinking due to recent deposition in the Mississippi embankment region. They didn't even know this cottage grove, grove fault existed until uh, the geologist came in to research the uh, 1968 5.5 earthquake. They have a map here of where the earthquake occurred. And here we got the Cottage Grove fault zone. The circles on this map 
we got them along the fault zone and then down below by uh, shiny town uh, those are areas where they found uh, dike intrusion of lava here you can see areas where dikes have been observed and then the fault zones they also have on here intensity and how strong it should be before people notice the earthquake noticed only by sensitive people 3.5 and that's changed and I think that's changed because USGS continues to downgrade earthquakes and they have it from a 3.5 all the way up to um, an 8.1 or greater you might take note and read what it says for a 7.4 to an 8.1 few buildings remain standing bridges destroyed all services railway pipes and cables out of action great landslides and floods yeah, tsunamis um, 8.1 or greater total destruction objects thrown into air ground rises and falls in waves and they have a comparison of this 5.5 earthquake compared to the uh, new madrid earthquake that occurred it was only one ten millionth of the energy released by the uh, 1911-1912 earthquake one tenth of a millionth of the energy released now many of you will know about the earthquake that happened in alaska on march 27 1964 that was um, a magnitude 8.5 now this paper was done uh, published in 1968 and the paper takes forever to load you got to do like one page at a time before the next page will pop up for you just a word of warning if you want to go to it so in the last week in the last seven days there's been 13 earthquakes recorded on this map uh, the largest it looks like being a 2.4 which was yesterday and that was 9.9 .9 kilometers in depth so that would be about 6.1 miles below sea level and as you know if you follow me all earthquakes are measured from sea level so that's what I've been working on <laughs> I've been working on marking this all out for you and, um, yeah I thought it was interesting that there is in fact magma down there and past eruptions of um, at least one volcano and I've told you, as the Earth's magnetic field weakens, um, we're going to have more earthquakes, more volcanic eruptions, things like that. Hopefully that doesn't happen along the New Madrid uh, fault zone, right? So if any thoughts or comments or questions, please put it down below. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Please stay safe, and I'll talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.